All right, hi everybody. Uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I know we're probably holding you up for lunch. Who, who's hungry? <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, we'll go fast then. Uh, so hi, my name is Eric Johnson. I'm a tech lead manager at Google working in the Seattle office, and I run a small team of engineers that work on open source integration for Google Cloud Platform. Hi, I'm Colleen. I work on Eric's team. I've been at Google for about uh, four months working on the service broker. So before we uh, pass it over to Colleen to kind of walk you through the service broker work that she's been doing, I figured I'd talk a little bit about Google Cloud Platform. Uh, so Google Cloud Platform, uh, how, how many people have ever even heard of it? <laughs> Holy smokes. <laughs> Are you, you're pulling my leg, right? Okay, so um, never mind then. We'll just keep going. So I guess, I don't know, Jay, I was, I'm sub substituting for Jay Marshall. Does anybody know Jay Marshall? Okay, great. So I don't do nearly a good enough job at this as uh, Jay does. But uh, anyway, so Jay likes to talk about you know, how Google, we just turned 18, I think, yesterday also. Um, so we've been doing this for a while, running our own infrastructure. We've done a lot of uh, innovations, both in the data center as well as our networking, uh, software distributed systems. We're, so we're, we've been doing this for a long time, but we just got into cloud sort of recently, I'd say within the last few, three, four years. Um, uh, cloud Foundry, right? So why would you care about any of this stuff? Um, <laughs> If you're going to use a Cloud Foundry deployment, uh, you can now do that on top of Google Cloud Platform. Uh, we have a Bosch CPI now, Cloud Provider Interface, uh, that lets you run Cloud Foundry on top of Google Cloud infrastructure. So we have a virtual machine service we call Google Compute Engine. And this diagram here we showed off at Spring 1. Was anybody at Spring 1 by chance? A couple of people, great. So we walked through kind of how we did this. Uh, we had a couple of folks on the team walk through this. Um, basically, what we've got here are two Cloud Foundry deployments uh, in two different zones. There's a separate director in each. Um, we have Terraform scripts on our GitHub repo. All of this stuff is moved into Cloud Foundry Incubator right now. Um, and we've got Terraform scripts that will help you set up all of the Google Cloud infrastructure. So the load balancers, the firewall rules, um, networking, service accounts, things that you would need to operate Cloud Foundry. And then we also have instructions for how to use Terraform to deploy the uh, open source Cloud Foundry. So setting up that infrastructure as well and then using the Bosch director to get that stuff deployed. Um, what this in, uh, illustrates also here is that you've got your Cloud Foundry sitting behind Google's load balancer. So this is the same load balancer that Google uses internally for servicing Gmail, YouTube apps, all of that stuff. Uh, we surface a global Anycast IP address and you can route traffic to the closest Cloud Foundry deployment that way, or what you can do is set up a Cloud DNS, uh, and then just target basically, uh, you know, CF log into whichever DNS zone you want, uh, or API endpoint you want. You could do multiple deployments simultaneously, or you could target a specific region. I always want to hit the arrow key. Uh, as far as Google Cloud services go, or Google Cloud Platform, um, all of these are services categorized right by various. Uh, um, sections like networking, developer tools, machine learning. Um, so there's a lot there to take a look at. Um, I would encourage anybody that's interested in this to, for deeper dives to go to cloud.google.com. Uh, we've got a pretty good set of marketing pages that'll walk you through a lot of this stuff. Um, but as far as running Cloud Foundry goes, some of the ones that you care most about would be Compute Engine, uh, Google Cloud Storage, which is our version of S3, um, Cloud SQL, uh, obviously, the networking stuff is pretty critical to having a really uh, low latency, high throughput Cloud Foundry deployment. Uh, and we also have, uh, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, Google Compute Engine. So some of the things that you might care about uh, that are differentiators, I think, from other cloud providers. Uh, how many people run Cloud Foundry on a cloud provider? Great, quite a few. Excellent. Uh, so one of the things I think that sets us apart, obviously, is the network. I've talked about that a little bit. Uh, Google has its own uh, backbone all over the planet, right? So we run our own fiber everywhere. Um, the way that we have that set up, obviously, is when you access a Google Cloud service, in this case, say Cloud Foundry running underneath GC, uh, GCP, um, we're going to drop you down into our network as quickly as possible and then route you all through Google's backbone. Um, so low latency, high throughput networking. We have a global network space, uh, sub-networks per region, but your machines can talk across those. You don't have to set up special firewall rules. Um, so that's always like an eye-opener for people or an eyebrow raiser. Uh, we also have custom machine sizes, so sliders. You can set your own CPU or memory as well as discrete sizes. 
Um, preemptible VMs, if you're running workloads that can be disrupted, um, that's a good fit for this. Uh, live migration, as we move things around the data center, will actually move your virtual machine from one host to another. Uh, and it's a very small service disruption, kind of like pulling the ethernet cable out and sticking it back in. Um, 30 to 45 second boot time, so that's another thing. Uh, people are like, well, it comes up fast. Um, per minute billing, uh, so cost savings for Google Cloud. Uh, if you run a workload that lasts 15 minutes, you bring up a VM, run it for 15 minutes, shut it down, you pay us 15 for 15 minutes. Um, we also have sustained use discounts. So if you leave a machine running for a full billing cycle, it becomes 30% cheaper than the list price. Uh, so that's another way, like if you've got long running workloads. The preemptible VMs that I talked about, if you have workloads that can survive like that, how many people run Concourse? Everybody runs Concourse, that's great. So you can set on your jobs, right, or your tasks, I'm not sure the exact term. Uh, you can try retries, right? So you'd have a pipeline running along, um, maybe we yank the VM out from underneath you in the mid, mid, mid stream, um, and then you just have retry policies come in place. Bosch will come along and bring that VM right back up for you, right? So 80% uh, cheaper than list price. So great, great fit for concourse. And with that, I'll pass it over to Colleen. Also, if you're interested in some of those data services, I'll plug Eric's lightning talk for later this afternoon. Uh, he's gonna be talking about those. So the few of you that were at Spring One probably saw Jay in the keynote, um, and he uh, announced that we're gonna be exposing these services natively by the end of the year. So that's the work that I've been doing with the service broker. You knew he was gonna say that, right? I didn't know he was gonna say that. And I didn't know that Eric was gonna screenshot my dev machine and uh, show the marketplace. Um, so I wanted to give a quick overview of uh, Google Cloud Platform architecture for any of you that haven't used it before. So it's org and project based. Um, projects are just wrappers around uh, resources, users, IAM policies, things like that. We have our own identity and access management service um, and that's what controls the permissions to your resources. We offer project level roles as well as curated roles they're service specific, so your application can, for example, only have um, read permissions for only cloud storage. And service accounts are the way that you would uh, map your application to uh, an IAM policy. So they're basically like user accounts, but meant to be used by your application. They can do anything that a user account can do. So you can still set these uh, specific permissions on them. And to use the service broker, you create basically a, a root level service account that has owner permissions at the project level, which gives it the ability to create new service accounts, which is the credentials that we'll provide to you on a CF bind. And then we'd suggest, because you can suggest your own role for a CF bind, um, using those curated roles to set minimum necessary permissions. So we're re releasing the service broker with a subset of GCP service offerings. Um, storage, it's our bucket-based file storage system comparable to S3. Provision for each of these services means something a little different. So for cloud storage, provision means you'll be creating a new bucket. Um, and we'll have different standard plans uh, for cloud storage that are based around accessibility and uh, pricing. PubSub, it's our messaging service comparable to SQS. Uh, we don't really have different tiered plans for PubSub, so you just get a default plan, and in that case, provisioning is going to create a new topic uh, and an optional subscription. BigQuery is our big data analytics engine. It has a SQL-like interface, and in this case, Provisioning is going to be creating a new data set, and again, we just have one plan for BigQuery. Cloud SQL is our uh, basically equivalent to RDS offering. Right now, MySQL is the only database engine that we support, um, and so provisioning is going to create a new 
server instance as well as a database. And then since Cloud SQL doesn't support IAM roles, we'll just use standard username, passwords, and SSL certs uh, for your bind credentials. And the machine learning APIs. <laughs> so uh, we tested these, did, did a little uh, demo with this adorable puppy picture. And this is just one of the many things that you can do with our machine learning APIs. Um, upload the picture and it will analyze and give you some tags back as to what is in the picture. So it knows it's a dog, it knows it's a puppy specifically. Um, and then the other uh, tabs that you can see there provide you with more information about the image. Um, you'll also have access to our uh, speech translate and natural language APIs. Since they're just APIs, provision doesn't really do anything, um, <laughs> but you can bind to these and then you'll get a service account that is authenticated for the APIs. Who wants to do a demo? Yay. <laughs> Uh, how do I? I think I got it. Okay. So if you wanted to use the service broker through Pivotal Cloud Foundry's Ops Manager, this is what the config page looked like. So you have uh, these three tabs over here that your operator will need to fill out. This root service account is a set of credentials that gets downloaded automatically when you create a service account. And you'll just paste those in. You'll need to set up a backing MySQL database for the service broker. And you'll need to set up uh, some dynamic service plans if you want to use Cloud SQL. And for those, you're just setting up a, picking a tier, um, a pricing plan, and setting a max disk size. And then as a Cloud Foundry developer, you can come into Apps Manager, and this is what you'll see in the marketplace. So let's actually, now I might need you to hold the mic. <laughs> well, this is going to be fun doing it from the side. Maybe you can yell. Can I yell? Should I stand over here? Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. Yell with the microphone. Just kidding. This is hard because my mouse is okay. Maybe the disk microphone There we go. Okay. Good. So I created a little app for Summit called CF Summit, and all it does is upload a picture to a Google Cloud storage bucket. So we can curl CF Summit and put a picture. And then it takes a bucket name. Call it CF Summit. Thinking. <coughs> we don't have any credentials. Right. We don't even have a bucket, do we? Let's go look. Where's my mouse? There it is. So we can come into the Google Cloud Platform UI uh, console. And we can see we don't have any buckets right now. So let's create one. If we go to the marketplace, Eventually, with the slow conference Wi-Fi, we can see that we have a uh, Google storage listed in the marketplace. So let's CF create service <coughs> Google storage, um, and let's call it uh, use the standard plan and call it storage test. And then for almost all of these calls, you'll need to supply some custom parameters. So for this call, you're just supplying a name which is the name of the bucket. OK. So then now if we go back and refresh our console, now we have CF Summit bucket. Cool. So let's bind to the bucket to get our credentials. So bind service CF Summit. Thank you. 
storage test. This is like a live, live demo with the typing even. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then this is where you'll supply that IAM role. And then I'm gonna use a curated role, so I'm gonna use the storage admin role that has permissions to upload things. And I'm going to restage, and then while it's restaging, we'll go take a look at what bind made. <coughs> so if we come back into our I am an admin panel, we can go to the service accounts pane and see that we have a new service account here with the part of the binding ID to identify it. And then if we flip over to IAM, we can see, we need to refresh the page. That's what we can see. <coughs> now we can see our new service account storage admin permissions. And now let's see if restage is done. Not quite. So while that's going on, I'm supposed to tell jokes. Um, actually, what I wanted to do is uh, give a shout out to Mark DeCuna and uh, Topher Bullock uh, working out of the Toronto office. Uh, they've been very good in terms of helping us, uh, kind of giving us education on how to develop a service broker, um, kind of some pointers, tips and tricks on getting this stuff developed. We've worked very closely with lots of folks across Pivotal. Um, Mike Jeffrey's team also uh, helped us a lot. We were out at, uh, what was it, Industry. Pivotal Industry Days up in Seattle not too long ago. Um, Mike Goddard on that team also helped us a lot. Uh, so it's just been, and there are many other teams at Pivotal that we've been working with uh, for like the Bosch CPI and everything. Uh, so that's my joke. <laughs> awesome, so I restaged. So let's try that curl again. Success. Now I have to find my cursor again. So let's go look at what's in the bucket. Oh, there's one thing in there. It's a test image. <laughs> that Wi-Fi, right? I thought Google was supposed to be fast, Colin. <laughs> uh. Oh yeah, how do we full screen? Yeah. This guy. Okay. So that's what we have coming out and then we'll have, oh I can take this back now. We'll have a bunch of other uh, iterations coming up pretty much constantly as soon as we can. So to start with, we're gonna add a bunch more services, um, big table, data flow, logging, anything else that you guys want, please let us know. Um, I've heard from one or two people that CLI plugins are a cool thing, so maybe I'll write one of those. <laughs> and you can actually see this now on GitHub. Super exciting. <clears throat> so slow. It's just building suspense. And you can download it and deploy it as a service broker to your CF installation. But you really can't, right? Because it says it's a private repo. So it does. Should I make it public? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> should, you, should you make it public? This is dramatic. This is <laughs> live action open source. Oh, now you gotta type your password. It's a bunch of dots, isn't it? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. This could be bad, I guess. That was the delete button? Was that? I, I hope I clicked the right button. Oh, now I have to remember my. Yay. Woo! <laughs> okay. And if you
you want more information, you have questions, you have input, anything, please feel free to reach out to me or Eric or Jay. And I guess lastly, so it's, I didn't see Alex. Is Alex around? Probably not. So I saw this and I was like, oh, I feel embarrassed because we didn't have any YAML in our presentation. So we added a little YAML for you. <laughs> um, so for, for anyone, thank you very much. For anyone that has not tried GCP, we do have a free trial. It's $300 credit. Um, last like 60 or 90 days, something like that. It's enough to kind of just tinker around a little bit, probably not enough for a full Cloud Foundry deployment. Um, and then also we've got the Bosch link there as well. So if you're interested in trying open source Cloud Foundry on top of GCP, that's a great place to get started. And with that, we'll let you go to lunch, unless there's questions. I don't know, do you, are we doing questions? questions? We'll be around, yeah. so we're easy to find. We have a booth. Uh, there's a lightning talk later also. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for coming.